Hi, we're going to do just a quick overview of how to activate the Nearpod add-on in your Google Slides. So you can either start fresh with a new slide or the really cool feature is you can select an already existing slide that you've used in the past. As you're going to go up to your add-ons menu. Just give it a minute if it doesn't appear right away. And there, Nearpod is already there, so you're just going to open Nearpod and you'll have a menu open up on the side of all the different elements that you can then begin to incorporate and push into your slides. So it depends on what you're thinking. You can use Nearpod to create both asynchronous lessons that students work on self-paced, or you can also use it to guide a synchronous and interactive engaging lesson with your students as well. I'm going to start as if this were a synchronous lesson. One of the elements I really like to start with is a collaborate board. You can choose different textures and backgrounds here. So you can just type in a prompt and students will be able to write their responses and as they're writing it will populate live and everyone can see everyone's responses. So it's a nice way to start the class period while you're waiting for students to show up to get logged in. You can start to build conversation and interaction. It can kind of be a community moment uh, early on at the beginning of a class period. You could also start with a 360 degree field trip. I've done that before. Students enjoy that. So you can send them into outer space or pretty much anywhere on earth, maybe in relation to your lesson or just something for fun. And it kind of gives them something to do and interact with while you're waiting for for uh, everyone to get into the class. So then you can this begin to populate different elements. A great feature to add in pretty much at any moment. You could do this at the beginning. It could be part of a uh, checking for understanding. Is to add a poll question. And you can ask a question that ties in to your asynchronous lesson or you could be activating prior knowledge, uh, but there's a lot of different ways you can play around with poll. It can even be a community building moment where you're asking them you know, what their favorite flavor pizza is. You can add in a timer or leave it open-ended. Uh, I do like to add a timer. It adds that element of fun and I can do a countdown with students when I'm doing a live lesson. If you're using this poll question asynchronously, you may want to attach some video content or send them to an article or a web page, or you can even um, give them audio prompting here to give some background information in relation to this question. So you have a lot of options there. So once you click save, these elements are now um, they're flat, they're 2D, they, this is not what it will look like in the Nearpod lesson, but it does let you, it's a place saver there. You can move them around just like any other slide and you be, can begin to play with it. So there's, there's a lot of fun that you can have there. I just want to take a few minutes to review what some of the different components are that you can add in. Some of them are interactive while others are uh, just providing some content. So these are relatively, I think, self-explanatory, the collaborate where we just looked at. Draw it is an interesting feature. You can take a PDF, like a worksheet, and you can turn it into a draw it where students can circle the correct answer or write in answers. Now it is kind of rigid to do draw it if you're working off a laptop, but students who have tablets have more freedom. Fill in the blanks. Matching pairs and memory tests are great scaffolds that you can add in after you've asked students to engage with content and you want to help scaffold their understanding. You can check in with understanding. Uh, you have Flipgrid, open-ended questions, and quiz here, which are ways that you can uh, more formally check for understanding. You can ask students open-ended questions or have a few quiz questions built in. and Remember that for every interactive component that students are responding to, their answers are being recorded and you can re uh, generate reports around their progress and their understanding. So it's a fantastic way to gather formative data and follow your students' progress over time. Time to Climb is a really fun one. Um, this is a lot like a Cahoots, and you can write out your own questions, assign the correct answers, and there's several different backgrounds that you can choose from in the moment when you're in that synchronous lesson. So that one builds a lot of excitement and fun. It can be a great way to round up a lesson or to start uh, based on your asynchronous material. Uh, web content is to send students to any kind of 
any kind of web page or article that you want students to view. Now keep in mind, when you incorporate this into your Nearpod lesson, it does not send them off to another page. It brings that page and embeds it into your lesson. Same thing with video content. So these are all opportunities to push in to your lesson. Sway is another interesting feature here. It, they are pre-made on certain topics, so you can pick one and preview it before you push it in. It's very visual, and so this is um, a fun way to bring in a lot of visual information uh, in relation to your lesson topics. So you can add those in. And then another component is if you have a slide presentation that you want your students to read through, maybe you've compiled the important notes or procedures that you want students to follow through, you can embed that directly from your drive or your device, your laptop. So those are some uh, great features as well. I just want to take a quick moment to talk about the FET simulations. These are fantastic elements that you can add into your science or math classroom. And the way that they work is that when you embed one of these into your lesson, students are able to interact with it. It loads on each student's device. So each student is allowed to play around with the simulation, manipulate the variables, so they can start to see on their own how it works and uh, it's a lot of fun. If you do want to edit any slide at any given moment, you just click on that slide or click on the Nearpod component, click edit the slide. It takes a minute for it to load. Don't lose faith. It'll pop up and then you can go in and change any text or simulation or change the timer that you want to do. And then um, you add done, you're finished. When you are actually done to package this up and send it off to Nearpod, you save and go to Nearpod. It will auto open your Nearpod. Uh, I'm just going to hover over this for a moment. You do notice that you have several different options here and we are using Zoom this year so we're going to want to choose live lesson with Zoom for our synchronous time and for the asynchronous moments we've got our student pace. I do strongly, strongly recommend previewing your Nearpod first, your slide presentation, to make sure that all of your elements that you added are um, are actually interacting. Sometimes, you know, if your memory ran out, you think you have an interactive component there, but it actually does not move and be interactive. It's just a screenshot. So you can test that out through your preview. So I'm going to go back. Now, when I am ready to share this, maybe I want to set this as a student, um, as an asynchronous lesson. You can share this with the link. Just grab your link right here. You can copy it. You can embed this directly into your Google Classroom. It will use whatever title you have for your um, slide. But definitely remember to copy your class code. If you do not have the code, students will not be able to open your lesson. So as you can see, it's quite simple to integrate Nearpod components into existing slide presentations. It is a very fun app. There, it is a little bit tricky at first, so I do recommend previewing your slides and testing it out if possible with someone else before you go live with students for your very first time. But once you start to get the hang of it, it's really quite simple to manage and it really brings a whole new level of engagement and interaction to your lessons. So if you have any questions as you are experimenting and exploring, don't hesitate to reach out to either me or EdTech or some fellow teachers who have already been using Nearpod. Um, but I do encourage you to take a moment now and choose a slide that you've used before. Maybe work on your first unit or your first day of class and start to build out an interactive lesson. Have fun.